This conference will now be recorded. Right. To introduce myself, uh, myself Ravinder, uh, I'm working as a SQL DB basically last 14 years. I'm working on the MongoDB now more than seven years now. I do work on MongoDB uh, like uh, in and out. In fact, I do work on cloud technologies also, Azure, AWS, and I do work on Postgres also along with this. These are the main technical background that I do work on day to day basis. So the major agenda about today's class is all about why we need to learn NoSQL. That is the main agenda because we are working on RDBMS technology since very long. They are so sophisticated. Why these products are predominantly you know, dominating the market nowadays? What is the need in fact? What is the current need it is fulfilling so that we can adapt to these technologies and implement? So that is the main agenda. Understand what we are learning, why we are learning, what is the importance of the product in fact? There we are going to spend most of the energy of this class. Just try to follow. First, what is NoSQL? In fact, we will talk about that in the next slide itself. Basically, NoSQL technologies are started becoming popular since 2010. In fact, before that, there was no market. In fact, why it is so? I'll give a justification as we move on. Uh, why before that we were not having much of uh, popularity for NoSQL technology? Just for the case. Uh, Smart devices are the main reason where the people are generating versat versatile data. In fact, you you take about any app that you talk about. Most of the people are generating versatile data like uh, media. It can be text to format. It can be unstructured, semi-structured. You cannot just keep it uh, everything on a rigid you know, schema model. All RDBMS follows will follow the rigid schema model. You cannot load some data which is not defined as a structure in the background. That is the RDBMS functionality, in fact. To break that, this noise scale actually came into picture, in fact. So then we're going to talk about what exactly the benefits we're going to get over RDBMS. There are significant benefits what we're going to get. So I'm going to talk in and out, uh, point by point, what exactly the benefits, what why the noise skills are implemented, especially. There, here you'll get fair idea exactly. And what are the terms we use in noise scale and RDBMS? We'll talk about that. And what are the different NoSQL technologies within NoSQL? What are the different things we have? And why we need to learn out of all that Mongo itself? We'll justify that. And to maintain the data consistency in all RDBMS will follow the asset property to keep the data consistency. Here it will follow the base property. Okay. So we will see that. Okay. So first let's talk about uh, architectures. So first thing is, you know, this was introduced. It is an old technology. In fact, it's not just uh, uh, invented in 2010. It is invented into the 1998 itself, but it was not getting the popularity because the data was rigid. I mean, the people were, you know, the people who enter the data usually used to enter the data through computers. In fact, we were not having a smart devices before 2010. In fact, we were having that uh, QWERTY keypads where you can just use the phone for calling and getting a call and making a call. That's it. You cannot generate data with a different way. You don't have much of tablets, maybe, you know, like uh, the evolution of tablets was not happened. Data was absolutely was controlled and limited and it was in the structured format before that. So when these things are introduced, there are too many, you know, like devices, like you can interact with the, you know, like a uh, website using many devices and you can upload the data in any format. How these actual websites are working. If you go to the Facebook or any Twitter or Instagram, you can upload anything there. You can write your own comment irrespective of the size of the text. Uh, you can load, upload a video. In fact, you can you can do anything that you want. How these data formats are accepted by the systems? Because all these data ultimately is going to the database servers. They are sitting in the database servers. How they're accepted? So that's something we're going to see in detail in the course. Actually, we can justify it. How structured data, semi-structured data, unstructured data are completely handled. When it comes to the media, like uh, you cannot edit such media like a uh, few photos, videos, scan docs, these kind of things you cannot modify it through query, in fact, right? So, how we can handle that data using the NoSQL technology more efficient than the RDBMS, we're going to see that, in fact. So, this product is invented by the person called Carl Stroji in 1998. Uh, that time it was not popularized, but slowly now it is getting much popular. We're going to talk about that. What are the reasons it is actually popularizing? The first selling point for this is open source technology. All NoSQL technologies actually 
if you look if you look at in the market rdvms side you have open source but they are limited i mean postgres is open source where it has a lot of bugs if you don't subscribe to edb enterprise database version in fact so if if you get the bugs which you cannot resolve yourself but the product itself is a buggy product okay that is one thing you have open source in rdbms mysql used to be open source but it is not fully open source anymore once the oracle bought that product it is you cannot say that it is open source anymore almost it is licensed only so other than that all rdbms are purely commercial if you talk about sql server you have express edition oracle also they do have a limited very limited if you go with the express edition your database can grow up to maximum 10 gb it can use only one core and it can only use two gb there are a lot of limitations around right if you have to go with higher side you have to go for the licensing version you have to pay too much of licensing cost that is one of the biggest selling point for the noSQL family open source is one thing the next thing is it will take the data in any format if it is rdbms just uh, have an idea first then i'll take you through every point that i mentioned in the slide you can quickly connect in fact first let me make you comfortable what the difference between rdbms and noSQL then i'll talk about point by point in the slides just follow it in fact here so what i'm trying to talk uh, in the slide what i'm going to just show first and then talk about it so that you can quickly understand what we are trying to talk here in the class in fact so here uh, if i look at i have a student table and if i read the data from the student table what structure i have i can get to know if i read it right there are three columns in fact here if i'm trying to insert some data into that um, table if it fits i mean the values what i'm supplying to the query what the the structure defined in the database if it fits it'll accept the data in fact okay so example i'm just sending the data in three column format because the what i defined here is three column format if i run this one it will accept in fact okay to the primary key and then i gave the value which is already there Fine. I'll go with the 15 just for the case it accepted it why it is accepted because the number of columns the number of input what you are giving is absolutely correct so now if I exceed that example okay so if I do this what happens it will not accept it why it won't accept it in fact because all RDBMS follow the rigid schema model if I run this one it is saying that column name column name and the number of columns supplied value does not match the definition that you have done on the table the table has only three columns and you supplied four columns data it does not take that data whereas if you come to the no sql for that matter any no sql technology you talk about okay uh, just quickly connect the don't worry about uh, how did i run the mongo and all that i'm going to just show that how it accept the data that, that is what you need to understand today so here uh, so i'll use one database dba using a database will create the database straight away don't worry about this what you need to understand here is mongo can take the data in any format that is the only thing i'm justifying right now so i'm going to there is no database there is no table or collection something like that if i'm trying to load the data on the fly it is a dynamic schema it will create the tables database everything on the fly you don't have to define anything it takes the data in any format in any column structure there is no dependency at all it is a dynamic on the flight it does build the schema and everything so i'll make you understand what kind of queries we do write as a dba it is so simple damn simple anybody can write it okay i'll take four classes and that uh, you can write a json scripts any lkg guy can follow it in fact so just for the case so i did not define any column structure i'm just trying to load some data here okay so if i do this one it accepted the data if i go and see the data just for the case how the data is actually looks within the collection or you can say that a table it has a s name s, s number s name address now the next row what i'm going to insert here a second here here i'm just entering saga let it be maniconda but i'm giving email address extra field to the second record of the same collection or table you can call it as you don't understand what is a table what is collection right now but i'll give a slowly you will get to know all the terms and conditions but uh, 
help us understand this first record has uh, three fields the second record has uh, four fields if i go with the next record the advantage of this product is this is the main advantage dynamic schema model and schema less you don't have to define the schema or else every day every document every row can be can have any structure it doesn't have any dif, uh, dependencies in fact that is a big deal here okay simple here i'm just keeping here okay. and here i'm adding a phone number so what i wanted to actually conclude out of it is mongodb is a dynamic schema model what exactly the dynamic schema model i was not created a database also just a user database called dba and i inserted the data directly into the student collection or table you can say it accepted it i did not create any structure predefined schema does not uh, you know apply to the mongo you can define your own uh, conditions if you want by default it is a schema less or dynamic schema model you keep the data in any format doesn't matter every row or you can call it as a document can have any structure it can just accept the data as it is how you are pushing the data to the system that's where that is the biggest one of the uh, selling point for this product it can work with the json json is a compatible with any rdbms product again you can transfer the data from sql to mongo mongo to sql so easily because this json whatever what we are interacting with it is a json what exactly the json how do you write the json queries we're going to talk about four classes it is that simple anybody can write it in fact so what i wanted to conclude out of it is all rdbms are rigid schema model without definition of the table in the background you cannot insert the data any rdbms you take for that matter all are absolutely schema rigid model uh, they do follow and in the noisql all products will follow the schema less you don't have to worry about the next biggest selling point for this product is distributed computing model distributed computing model if it is rdbms system assume a case rdbms system is capable of handling any big data with a given uh, resources on the machine if example i have a, a one database i have created one data file one log file if the data is growing maybe i wanted to stripe the data i'm creating more drives and striping the data okay we are striping the data so you can stripe more and more data one database at the end becomes tbs of content assume a case maybe you have one tb you could do the real day rebuilding indexes update statistics on timely you get the performance good enough if it becomes 10 tb database in a single database okay so as you grow the database size you have to add more cpus the more cpus the more licensing cost for the rdbm system that's the default licensing cost uh, every product will follow uh, towards rdbms products so if you are deploying more cpus the more power you are giving it but the database becomes too big in a single system what happens you cannot do the maintenance activities like rebuilding indexes because 10 tb database if you are doing the rebuilding index it takes even two days also not sufficient if it is a fragmentation is high on the database two days is also if you cannot do the rebuilding indexes you cannot maintain that maintenance activities you cannot scale with the performance you will go out of performance in fact right this is called vertical scaling you keep the more data in a single database and you keep the more power it is okay but when the database goes beyond certain uh, sizes you cannot do the maintenance activity you cannot afford right you cannot keep the entire database you know under lock you doing the rebuilding index and a table is a lock right you, you that impose a lock you cannot do other uh, uh, transactions at that moment so what i wanted to discuss here architecture of the no sql family every no sql family almost follow this architecture just try to follow then i'll come back to slides you will connect more if i discuss this first and then explain point by point that is the only intention i wanted to discuss the diagrams and a little bit of architecture first and then talk about actual uh, points that i mentioned in the slide okay just try to follow this role uh, we'll call it as shards in fact and you'll have a config servers you'll have a mongoose servers and you'll have the application servers here i'll connect you all of i'll take up the question also questions also if you have it this is a main difference especially compared to rdbms and no sql these are all applications uh, they hit from the front end they connect to the mongoose this is uh, something like a router which will 
take you to the config servers config servers will maintain the metadata where the data are sitting okay actual data where the data data will be here in shard one this is shard one you can call shard one or replica one whatever you can say so this is a shard two and this is shard three so in rdbms generally you can write into one system all the time you can manage if it is a sql server you can build ag cluster ag cluster what it does you write into one node other nodes will sync from the primary that's how the ag cluster works always on groups you write into one machine only at any point you cannot write into two different machines for the recovery point i'm talking about scalability is another point scalability we will justify in a different way where mongodb can better than the rdbms but the here what we are trying to talk the right capacity right capacity in all rdbms will go to one if it is go to oracle rack that followed a little different architecture uh, you can write into multiple servers in the oracle you can write into multiple servers at the end it will write into one volume you cannot keep multiple volumes for the right load so you can write into all these different machines but the problem is one storage file system you can have in the background at any point is one that's a big problem with rdbms if i come to the sql server always on you can write into one you can sync to other nodes but any point of time you can write into one if i come to the no sql distributed computing model why do we say distributed computing model so if i submit a query to the mongoose we're going to do this impractical in and out just understand the only the architecture for now because this is the biggest thing you need to catch out of this as a demo why because why mongodb is getting popularized the major points i'm going to mention in the slide are related to this architecture that is a pro that is why i'm discussing first the diagrams and then take you to the slide so here if i hit the mongoose what it does it will contact the config servers config server will hold the way the data is actually where it has to write the data also to balance it across the clusters we'll call it as a cluster altogether this is shard one shard two shard three again it will keep two more copies of the data here if it goes one of the machine goes down this will become primary automatically in this set it will serve the data automatically so you'll have the availability at the same time you can write the data parallelly so here there are you know like requests are unlimited in the no sql family if you talk about facebook twitter instagram that kind of platforms they do get unexpected traffic all the time how do they scale you never see that page timeout issues in that platforms because there are thousands of servers a group of thousands of servers are you know like uh, giving you the response and even once some servers are down still your profile will up and running how it happens for every chunk of data if i am loading example uh, 9 gb of data just assume a case 3 gb will load here 3 gb will load here 3 gb will load here because they are writing parallelly when it is writing parallelly it is typing the data when it, you are doing it to the multiple servers you are writing into different machines here and this chunk of data again 3 gb has its own protection here in the background multiple servers have the copy same copies of the data if one machine goes down other machine will pick up the load and start giving the response so you have the availability that is one point second point is writing the data into multiple physical servers at a time parallel write is possible you can write you can scale with any amount of write the more write capacity you need the more number of machines you have to deploy based on the working set i mean the the number of requests you are writing you have to add more shards the more shards the more parallel writes the more parallel writes you can scale with any amount of writes in fact in the background whatever it is writing in whatever the node this is the metadata if this is down your clusters are down this will be down why because it is highly dependent on config to read the data from the shards in fact we will talk about which can break the cluster which will be the disaster points we're going to talk about that's why it has a replica set again if this config is down this will hold the data so it will point automatically it get the data how it will connect to the nodes also automatically is there a listener concept which is a common point between the servers it will follow different architecture unlike rdbms when it comes to the if i have a three machines this is down this is up so are the people manually connect to this one by changing the connection strings no it has its own mechanism in a different way to connect to the active node by default we will talk about that first thing i wanted to conclude here is availability availability data is more than the rdbms products why because 
the big problem with rdbms you one file one not even one file one portion of the data file is corrupted if your sql server if your database corrupts more than 1000 pages it will go into suspect mode suspect mode means you cannot read the data you cannot do any transactions on the database so even one file is down assume a case entire database will be down entire database will be down it is it will not be operational as long as you recover it from the well known backups well i mean you have a non corruption free backups you can rebuild you can make the database online or else you can repair that you can get the database online either of it if it is a no sql technology if one of the shards uh, one of the shard is down one of the chunk is down still whatever the data is available the cluster will operate there is no single point of failure in the no sql family you will see the data gap if someone is trying to read data which is down in the cluster that data will throw the error the node and availability and all but the rest of the cluster whatever is up data can be read out of it that's a, another big selling point for this one in the rdbms it is a single point of failure if one one file is down or one if the pages are corrupted more than 1000 pages in sql server database absolutely not operational you have a 10 tb data but corrupt data is only 10 mb it is exceeded 1000 pages then that's it your database went into suspect mode you cannot do any operations just because of the 10 mb 10 tb is down but when it comes to the no sql it's not like that it is a distributed data got distributed whatever the chunk is down that chunk is not available but the rest of the chunks are available business is still running with the available data it's not entirely down in fact so this is another point so it is a no single point of failure all no sql follows the same similar architecture maybe a little different or you know one to other product but all are following the same structure almost so if you are one of the file is down it is one of the shard is down it is not down that is another one big point second point is availability of the data is more than the rdbms how do i say because here you each copy has multiple you know multiple shards multiple replicas in fact i have whatever the chunk i have it it, it copied here if it goes down it will give the availability that is the one thing next scalability scalability is more because you are writing into multiple machines reading from the multiple machine for single request all the time it's not one machine responding to you there are hundreds of machines based on the load okay so the read capacity can be distributed write capacity can be distributed it will give a better scalability than rdbms systems that is another thing third fourth thing is it can compress the data by default by 85 to 90% by default you don't have to give any explicit command to the you know system that okay compress my data it is inbuilt compress mechanism within the mongo there are storage engines we'll talk about some storage engine does not give you the compression but right now whatever you install sql server is a white tiger that will compress the data if it has text data it will compress by 90% inbuilt data compression if i have 1 tb data it can compress up to 200 or 100 gb 100 mb only 100 gb only 1 tb data to 100 g, 100 gb 900 gb data you are by default saving it it is a very you know resource wise you can save lot of resources by compressing the data there are diff, you know we going to talk about that there is a compression architecture uh, where we going to talk about what kind of compressions we do have what is the default compression why is that default why not others we going to justify it what what you need to understand is default compression mechanism and the lar systems right and the schema less is another selling point schema less is the biggest selling point why because data nowadays is absolutely versatile absolutely versatile in the sense all social platforms are versatility they you cannot define a structure and ask them to keep the data in that format only it is impossible right and if you look at you know the maybe machines logs you wanted to analyze the machine logs and look at the entire infrastructure health okay machine logs are all the time uh, they are in, in size wise they are different based on the error it generates right application logs are cookies of the application who is connecting how many times what they are trying what they are searching what what we have to recommend them as a product to sell so all that kind of data will be absolutely non structured they are not structured they'll have every row will have a different size in fact when there are different size rdbms does not support right those are the major biggest selling points whatever i mentioned very major points in fact i'm going to recap all that what i discussed 
right anyone want to ask something before i move the slide out of the architectures just for an idea i discussed here it's not something i'm not finishing anything today it's just an idea what is no sql here in fact so anyone if you want to ask you can ask yeah uh, i have one doubt yeah go ahead uh, most of companies uh, are going for cloud. Uh, why don't uh, why don't they, they are not utilizing uh, MongoDB? Yeah, MongoDB has a cloud. You have the Atlas tool. It's a cloud integrated tool. In fact, you can build through Atlas Enterprise version. If you wanted to okay. go with the cloud, keep a, the machine in the cloud and run it. So MongoDB is just a product. You run it in the cloud. You run it in the on-prem. Once it is up and running, okay. you do the same job. Does there is no difference? In fact what we do okay. either it is a cloud either it is a on-prem you don't okay. feel any great difference in fact except once the service you see you connect whether it is running as a pass service or ia service as a vm service anything you connect once you connect you do the same job within it a kind of okay. security management kind of backup methodologies kind of availability is what you define on the product level sharding mechanism mm -hmm. the functionality remains same wherever you go okay just a product okay. right it's, that is a platform yeah. where you run either it okay. is uh, on prem or cloud just platform all right okay. come back to the slide yeah good question any other question any from anyone fine so now come back to the slide you will get the more justification what i was talking in the slide anyway so no SQL means not only sql you have sql product already but there is another product called not only sql the not only SQL is a schema-less, you know, dynamic schema model. What it is open source, schema-less, highly scalable, scalable, highly available. These are the points I was talking about. And there is no relation between one record to other record. If I look at here, this record has three fields. This has a four field. This has a five fields. So it does not dependent on the other row or document what you defined already. There is no definition by default. It just accepts data as it is coming in any format okay so no skill technologies does not follow the same principle that rdbms follow that i am going to talk about in the course what it will follow what, how it is different from the rdbms because my most of experience is into the rdbms so i know in and out of the rdbms of sql server so so i can compare it i can give the better examples how for example i wanted to move a sql data to mongo on the fly how do i move it there are tools we use it in fact i'll talk about data migrations also to cross platforms if at all I have the data in this table. So basically, uh, we will move small tables through RDBMS to uh, Mongo also sometimes. Okay, for JSON, we will move this. We will do this. JSON auto. If I read this data, it comes into like this. It will it will read the data in the JSON format. Take this data into Notepad, okay, and then put it into okay DB dot uh, whatever it is uh, employee whatever it is. I'm just keeping it play dot insert many and then keep it we can convert rdbms data directly into mongo data which is a json data in fact so i'm migrating the sql data into mongo straight away on the fly just hit it uh, what happened just a minute it's another insert many spelling mistake sorry so now if i hit this so now you go and check that employee dot find you will see the data so sql data converted into json data because every product in the market in the rdbms they support the json even oracle for that matter any product for that matter all rdbms products are actually supports the json format that's a big selling point again to the mongo so we are also converting the all archival data into mongo and all the archival reports i mean if data in the OLTP will keep it five for five years and older than that data will go into the Mongo and they will keep it there. If anything is required, they will generate the data as a report from there if they required. Okay, how that happens, we will see that. I mean, first understand that the Mongo is actually follow the JSON scripting model, JSON, uh, whatever the data you have to insert, it goes in the JSON format or BSON format. These formats are accepted by all the systems that you run as towards the database and technologies. That is another big selling point for the MongoDB, in fact. 
these are the big data platforms so no scale products are absolutely they deal with a large volume of data not with a small data they define for it big data is defined for large volume of data different variety of data it can come with the structured semi structured unstructured large request volume of data La volume and uh, variety and uh, speed velocity these three are major components of major uh, selling points of the big data in fact they can deal with any type of data and with a greater velocity with a greater volume in fact these are the third generation application these are not older in fact nowadays only the people are sending the versatile data in fact before that we were not having it that's why these products were not having good uh, response from the market now everybody are generating different data so if you go to google play store almost all the apps are actually they we interact whatever the apps we interact almost they are actually do, does not follow the structured in fact every time you send a different data <coughs> how it is happening some are messaging services some are database oriented applications you don't know that what you know is only how you use it but how the data you know managed in the background is something through the servers only at the end so servers data how it is defined structure or semi structured unstructured so most of the applications are schemaless nowadays because people are agile nowadays they don't want to define something in the background deploy in the front end they are not waiting for it they can deploy anything in the front end it happens in the background automatically so that is what is the agile nature of the this product non relational there is no relation you cannot join the two collections to get the data like two tables in the rdbm systems you cannot join it here but you can join in a different way what are those we going to see that in a crude operation four classes i'm going to take there i'm going to define what exactly non relational how you can write a json scripting it is so simple anybody can follow runs on the commodity hardware this is another big point if it is rdbms you are running everything in a single server you need absolutely server class hardware to process that big data from one single system right it is very highly costly hardware because you are running on a single server entire thing to scale with the amount of data what you are processing your serve the, the hardware are you know uh, that you deploy it has to have absolutely the server class hardware it is very highly costly hardware not cheaper hardware here it can runs on the commodity means cheap hardware you can run on the cheap hardware like your laptop also can one it can be one of the node if you if, if it can accommodate the data what it what it can keep it as a shard so you are when you are writing itself you are sending the request to multiple different servers the right operations are striping out so you don't have to have that server class hardware it runs on the cheap hardware also where you don't need to invest too much of money but the infrastructure side in fact okay commodity hardware oh. with cheap yeah ramin yeah. sir i have one question yeah. Yeah. can you go back to the diagram this one okay so when you say uh, threads 1 threads 2 and threads 3 right the threads 1 are one node i mean one server uh the shard 4 is another sh no, no. set of repl replica no my question is like uh, when you are saying threads 1 threads 2 threads 3 right so uh, in sql server we have uh, node a node b nodes node c right, right. one server so mm -hmm. likewise you are uh, saying threads 1 belongs to no, one no. server threads 2 no no actually when you are writing if example i have a table a table as you may guess okay, okay. a table data i have a 10 gb as you may guess okay 2.5 okay. gb here it is when you are writing itself will stripe 2.5 gb here parallel write right 2.5 gb here so it is rdbms you write into one node you sync it to other nodes actually in the background it will only one okay. replica set equivalent to but when we are writing in the you know like shaded cluster group in the mongo you write into all the servers parallelly to different hardwares right this is okay. different servers all together physically so the write operations read operations are actually striped out so one single request from the front end but the back end group of servers are responding at the same time to give you the response so in That this example is, okay in this example you are saying you have three servers where you have threads 1 in server 1 threads 2 in server 2 and threads 3 in server 3 mm, mm. so this one Correct. shard has three servers in fact Three, three okay, starts. Three, Whatever you have the data, it is replicated here. It is replication. It is replication. This is a different uh, segment of data. It is two point five is one part. It's another part purely. This data is different. Okay. This data is different. Okay. 
because when you are writing itself you distributed the rate already so that's why each chunk is different data they are not same okay each chunk again has a replicate replication method to protect the rate uh, to, to have the availability yeah, yeah hi ravinder uh, uh, when we i mean when we get the data from uh, three so you are telling three are responding but the data is diff i mean loaded on different data is loaded on th different servers i mean chart one chart two chart three why it is responding i mean three servers if i uh, get one data see if you are reading the data which is that range is falling which is not sitting on one node it might be falling on many different nodes so it will go on which data parallel okay so config server uh, you are telling config server is uh, having metadata so it doesn't provide the information these server having this this data yeah it will provide actually it will be in the form of 64 chunk i mean each one chunk will have 64 mb data 64 mb data starting point ending point when you are reading what range of data you are reading what is starting from what value to what value based on that it will redirect your connection and get the data from the back end server because it it knows where the data is actually what you are requesting where the data is lying what you are asking yes so this is the main component for us without this there is no processing of data can happen from all the charts anyway we will see this in, in action but what we need to understand is the the parallel the processing power is parallel that's what is a major thing you need to understand the one request can go to different servers that though it is a data intensive the request still it can serve you better why because there are two of servers respond can you go on mute when you are not speaking maybe it is repeating my voice back yeah thank you so what is asking guys you know um, if you are if i am writing the data it is by default striped out so when it is striped out when i reading the same data again it has to go to multiple machine to get the data right because it is already segregated to the two different physical machines it has to go through each machine and get the data that way reads and writes are parallel and it can scale it is again has availability because multiple copies are protected if you can ask you know here i have only one server to give this data you know response and maintain all this data i need these many servers to build a shard you can run in a single server also as long as data is manageable okay to protect the same server you go with the replica set to have the scalability you come with the cluster so case to case we cannot directly go to shard all the time to get this benefit what we are talking it is depends on the data set we will configure and then get the benefit of the product we will see that open source open source is something see in our environment 90% 95% our servers are community edition servers are licensed free service servers in fact we are not paying single penny for 95% of the data we have roughly you know like 500 tb data on the mongo db so 500 tb data we are almost running we are almost running 400 plus tb data on the community edition itself community edition itself we are not paying single penny to the mongo db as a licensing cost okay we have only two enterprise clusters that is a licensed in fact because they are the financial applications they are built on the uh, you know like enterprise side so how much 90 percent of the infrastructure licensing cost i can save it by using the open source if it go to the any rtbms they, you cannot get that big a benefit they are very limited on the open source side they every product has open source limited uh, resource wise capping is very bad capping they have it you cannot use it for entirely that is another point why people are opting there are many points in fact schema less nowadays things are actually agile they cannot wait for things to be deployed in the background and then deploy into the front end they wanted to do everything in the front end it has to happen in the background so if you go to all play store nowadays you know all the applications are trying to be agile only they don't want to be so there are certain applications yes we have rdpm still you know very big popularity than no sql yes but in the near future i mean after 10 years you don't see the rdbms playing big role only the no sql will play the big role because these people are also trying to follow the the structured asset properties if they can implement rdbms definitely will fall down that will happen near soon but not now but yes that is a big selling point for this product is schemaless 
where you can keep the data in any format at a whatever the data wherever it is coming doesn't matter it just takes the data but if you don't want to be accepted the data you can give the schema definitions how you can give the schema definition is a third model for us you have a dedicated model for that i don't want to accept the data if it is not follows this kind of structure you can define it explicitly but implicitly it doesn't ask for any structure you have to impose yourself explicitly if you want highly highly scalable because you are writing the data to all the servers parallelly reading the data from all the servers parallelly that's why it is highly scalable than the rdbms highly available highly available no single point of failure if it is rdbms one drive is down it is typed into 100 drives it doesn't matter one file is down the entire database will be down single point of failure whereas it it, it comes to the no skill family entire chunk of data is down you have 100 gb 25 gb is down 75 gb is still operational okay that's a good thing scalable available both supports base property instead of asset property we will talk about this in a separate session you don't straight up understand the basic difference between the asset properties and base properties when you understand the actual technologies you understand that one how mongo recovers the data we have a point in time recoveries in mongo also we're going to do that live i'm going to delete database table some documents we're going to recover it how do we how does it uh, treat the data recovery how does rdbms treat the data in terms of recovery and where do we have the recovery where do we don't have a recovery so certain cases we don't have recovery entirely you lose all the data so rdbms it's not like that it is fully protected mostly okay there are in rdbms also you have simple recovery models where you lose the data if you don't go with the full recovery model so i'll compare it because i'm working on both the side i'll give a fair comparison you get the you know clear understanding oh this product is like this that product is like that because there is an advantage i am from the basically un, uh, rdbms product guy and also i'm working on nosql since very long so basic difference i am absolutely aware of i'm going to give a fair idea there mostly runs on the cluster to get the benefits like you wanted the scalability availability right so you need to run this under the cluster model so that you can get the benefit so on the larger data platforms you definitely go to the cluster only not as an individual not as any replica sets built for a newer application see newer application why we are saying newer application these are the, the the data versatility running on the you know like new applications like you don't have a facebook or twitter instagram in like 15 years ago right you you didn't had 15 years ago like i am talking about 2008 2007 that time that time only these platforms are started actually these platforms these platforms started and there only the noisql started actually getting the popularity because of the data versatility why we need to use uh, no sql i justified it but anyway see resolve the challenges faced in storing managing analyzing and archival of the data so storing the data have you store the data in a, in all formats structured semi structured unstructured managing the data large data you cannot manage in a single system single point of failure scalability availability all are missing analyzing and archiving the data so this can run with the highest you know like it can run with a huge data at a time you can generate a better report than rdbms when you run through the shared cluster okay so the reporting tools can be integrated with the mongoose they can you can analyze large chunk of data at one go better than the rdbm systems right analyzing the data using the mongo it's better than rdbms because it it it, it runs the data through multiple physical machines at a time for a single request it's a good thing explosion of social media sites like facebook twitter with the large data nodes so if you take about the social media platforms they never go down because of this architecture only and they accept any data in any format because of this architecture only right so you never see that your profile uh, you know like it will never have a lock if it is rdbms there is a locking mechanism right if one is reading other one cannot write but here you read right but there is no locking mechanism happens to your profile in the social platforms how that happens that also we're going to justify it okay you never ever see that your profile never go down why how in the background so how the locking works on this product we're going to spend time there also so we're going to get the fair idea there need of continuous availability yes these platforms need to be available if social platforms are not available no one will be interested if no one interested they don't get the money obviously 
so need of more flexible data model they wanted to comment they wanted to upload the video they wanted to upload the scan docs or they wanted to write a text which is something you know beyond your allowed limited number of characters what you wanted there's no such thing definition if you go to the rdbms the column also has the definition to accept number of characters where car is a dynamic model but it has certain limitations all around it cannot go too big uh, you know like uh, you cannot write you know a uh, very big comment in a single column because it has uh, some limitations around it so uh, here you don't have anything as such the no sql database is great solution to growing scale of databases and falling prices of commodity hardware so why it is great solution so why i'm reading this lines because guys i wanted to go point by point i can explain and close this topic but here point by point i why i'm going is giving you better in detail information here so if you look at the hardware okay if you if you were in a 10 years ago if you talk if you are buying a pen pen drive you know 10 years ago a 2 gb of pen drive it used to be like in thousands in thousands actually that time we have flop floppies then cds then uh, it converted era converted to pen drives right so in the initial days of the hardware the hardware cost is very high cost in fact you the cost of the commodity hardware is there is no commodity everything is costly in fact now you have the choice actually you know choose a cheaper hardware uh, you know like uh, uh, better sophisticated hardware you have the, all the options anyway but the compared to days goes on the storage cost is reducing if you look at now you get the you know pen drive also tb pen drive with a lesser cost okay hard disk also if you look at compared to olden days now the they are cheaper in fact so that's where falling prices of commodity hardware actually the cheaper hardware class is co coming down that's where mongo runs on the cheaper hardware so the cheaper solution for you to show the data right ultimately the infrastructure cost is reducing day by day which is good consists of column based and key value pairs and document databases we're going to talk about in one of the slide different uh, products will deal with the different uh, you know data structures in fact we'll little discussion will have there about it okay so offers capabilities and the large volume of data using the various available features that availability what we talked about it can write the data into multiple parallel servers and it can read the data from multiple servers so benefits of noskl continuous availability no single point of failure this is the biggest selling point multi data center capabilities here i was talking about a diagram here this i can keep in one data center this i'll keep in another data center so that even the entire data center is down i have the data here i can operate from there temporarily as long as this is up so data availability as well as scalability both are achieved and you can keep in a single replica set few of the nodes into primary node few of the nodes in the remote region they can be part of one group and they sync the data and then give you the better availability easy replication for distributed location independent capabilities the configuration the maintenance is easier than rdbms in fact these products are easier to manage as well as configuration wise how they how they are easier we will see it in the configurations and the respect to modules only they are easy to maintain it than the rdbms performance linear a uh, horizontal we'll call it as a, this is a horizontal computing model because one request is going through parallel servers to get the data this is called vertical computing model you scale with one server the data is growing the more resources you deploy the more resources you deploy the more power you get it and vertically you grow one machine only will receive all the requests right but here it is a horizontal computing model this is a vertical computing model we'll call it as vertical scaling horizontal scaling you can use that word also the next thing is flexible schema model dynamic or schema less model you don't have to define anything it just get the data and load the data as it is it is coming through the systems from the requested systems easy to implement maintain and grow yes compared to rdbms it is easy a three one for open source community this is open source all no skill family products are actually open source in fact okay and comparative oh no that these terms are important for us to keep in mind here onwards rdbms rigid scheme i just shown in the beginning itself if you are in trying to insert the data which is not within the defined schema model it will throw the error okay that is why it is rigid 
we are a dynamic schema any way in any structure it just take the data as it will have that you know the schema automatically taken and in loaded the data into it you don't have to define anything vertical scaling one machine horizontal scaling multiple servers will respond to your single request default it's so difficult to handle the big data in a single server it can manage but it is difficult because of the downtime you cannot get the downtime for 10 tb to run the rebuilding indexes it, it two days also not sufficient to run if it is highly fragmented so you cannot afford to keep the database also down for the maintenance activities you cannot stop the business so all are become a challenging thing for you when it keep in the single system here it can handle it can handle why because you are rebuilding the index and the indexing is happening on different physical nodes and the minimum set of data it got distributed right it is a minimum set though it is a one as a one all the all the nodes data will be projected here in the mongoose okay in the mongoose will display the entire data there you will see the big but in the background it is already distributed it has a minimal data in each node so that way you can do the maintenance though the data is big mix of open and proprietary mostly proprietary open source is very limited you have a op open source but still they are limited it is purely open source what exactly the open source see the big point here is guys i have a 10 tb data i can run in the enterprise i can run in the community edition also 10 tb data 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 wise there is no limitation that's a this is you this is what you need to understand enterprise wise community edition wise there is no data cutoffs i mean the data size what it can operate on 10 tb data you can run on enterprise 10 tb data you can run in the community edition also what is missing piece what is the missing feature that you are not going to get in the community edition or free edition encryptions you cannot get data encryptions are not available in transit encryption is not available okay in transit means you can uh, in, uh, uh, encrypt the data when it is traveling through the wire in fact that is not available inbuilt monitoring is not available inbuilt backup system is not available there are certain biggest points or you know biggest features are not available if they are giving everything in the community edition they don't get the money right they don't get so they cannot give everything in the open source so but data wise there is no limitation that's the point i wanted to mention you can run 10 tb in the community edition 10 tb in the enterprise edition there is no limitation on the data management side only the feature side there is a difference of course mostly standalone here it is distributed to get the benefit of no sql clusters i mean no sql product you need to run in the cluster environment to get the parallel writes parallel reads when the data is big single point of failure one data file is gone out of 100 data files you have one data file is corrupted the entire database is down entire whatever the size doesn't matter the entire database will be down here no single point of failure though one chart is down other charts still operational and it will give the it will respond with the data whatever is available in the uh, uh, online replicas in fact asset properties base property this i did not finish yet i wanted to talk about this in detail that's why i'm parking this discussion for now i cannot just say and then make you understand entirely so that's why I don't want to get into that detail at the moment because this is the biggest difference. The recovery in the Mongo, recovery in the RDBMS are different. How they are different and why they don't have it. That's where the discussion will start. That's why I cannot just give you the justification in an hour about it. We'll, we'll go with the architecture, there we'll justify it. Need server class hardware, here come with cheap hardware, absolutely. Costly, average compared to. This average does not absolutely cheaper if you go to enterprise enterprise to enterprise itself is average it's costly because every core if i come to my laptop just for a case of example if i go to here if i look at my laptop i have one socket four cores eight logical process so i need to pay the licensing cost to this eight logical processors not for uh, one physical socket in fact so they will follow the core based licensing model how many cores you have that many licensings uh, you have to pay for that in fact that is something is costly solution for anyone right so that is the one thing so next type of no scale we do have roughly 10 plus products in the market 10 plus products you can see that redis db memcache scalaris mongodb coach db raven db 
big table cassandra hbase hyper table infinite graph log db info grid these are all no scale family but you never heard of these names you never heard of those names i mean there is no implementation much of them out of this the big product is mongodb and hadoop these are the two major technologies in the noisy family they are selling products right now in the market compared to all these in fact okay they are actually defined for different purposes but most of the use cases fulfilled by the market is mongodb and hadoop especially to the noisql side okay all right introduction to big data what exactly this was already i was talking about big data is any data that cannot be handled by and processed through single traditional system you cannot do that in a single system because you have to run on a group of servers parallelly then only you can manage the big data it involves millions of users at one go and millions of queries running per second and billions of rows pulled and pulled in both in you know like parallelly they have to do so this can be handled only through the noisql family only not to the rdbms for sure big data gives you best volume it will deal with the large data operations variety means different data sets like structured semi structured unstructured velocity means speed so this is the, this is what is a big data impact altogether right so next vertical scaling you have to increase a more cpu more ram more disk space as the data is growing right but the problem is high cost with the hardware and licensing both downtime completely without downtime you cannot work on this in fact you have to have some downtime and threshold and limitations you cannot grow unlimited there should there is a limitation around though your server is highly configured that also has certain limitations at some point right thresholds and limitations single point of failures these are the biggest drawbacks of the rdbms if you come to here less cost it runs on the commodity hardware no downtime because it runs on the cluster each copy has a protection and uh, even when cluster is down still it operational it giving availability scalability that's what exactly downtime it talks about no limitation data wise there is no cutoff I mean, there is no uh, defined uh, cutoff you know data it can only support I, there is no 10 tb or 100 tb it can support up to there is no limitation as the data is growing you keep adding the number of shards here the, the more the number of shards you keep added the more scalability it gets that's it so the more data the more shards you keep added the uh, it automatically scale i mean distribute the data example i have 2.5 here 10, 10 gb 10 gb 10 gb 10 gb here it is empty new data right so example 50 gb you have it and four nodes 10 gb will automatically distribute it here when you add a fresh node fresh replica group or shard you don't have to do anything one single command will distribute the data across the new node automatically take the data from existing node and it will get rebalanced with the existing nodes automatically that's a great feature that is product is giving automatically one single command does that one single command add shard add the nodes it it will get added it will get the data from the existing nodes and till it get balanced with other nodes it will keep taking the data from the other nodes so that's how you scale with right so asset properties base properties i don't want to just uh, finish it away we will talk about it and then uh, mongodb used to call as tengen the old name of mongodb incorporation is a tengen the old name it got renamed to mongodb incorporation right so it is happened in 2008 i guess i'm not sure about the year but uh, tengen is the old name of the mongodb the company they renamed to mongodb incorporation now okay so this is key pair value structured based data model in fact what exactly they are we going to see that so i guess i sent you the course content to everyone uh, what exactly we focused on i quickly just talk about it quick luck come on posted the mongodb i just open it quickly so ravinda are you covering uh, some uh, modeling tool also like in cassandra we have op center so we are covering something like modeling tool here um monitoring tools uh, i am not going to cover detail but we are going to talk about atlas where it can monitors your load and then it can throw the alerts default alerts what we have so the here it is you have a native tools only you don't have any uh, tools from the third party to monitor the mongo in fact every tool what it has is only mongo tools not from the third party 
Yeah, what is the op manager? Some some tool is op manager also. Op manager is also the MongoDB tool. Atlas is also MongoDB tool. There is no third party tool involved on this product. So are you covering some some like op manager in detail? Yes, yes. We're going to build Atlas equivalent to Ops Manager. Ops Manager is an on-prem tool. Atlas is a cloud tool. Equivalent, they are they are equivalent in features. That except that runs on the cloud. So I'm going to create a free cluster there. I'm going to show that what features it can support. You are not what tool you are you using for uh, monitoring in your office? Monitoring. We have Ops Manager. Okay. That monitors everything. I mean about the enterprise, but this community editions uh, we have a service level third party tool like we have uh, Zanos. We have it. We have a new relic. There are two tools what they do. They monitor the CPU. They monitor the memory. They monitor the disk and they monitor the service status. What inside the Mongo is a manual work on the community edition. If it is enterprise edition, you get every metric. You get almost all metrics that you have on the product and you can keep the thresholds and you can you can get the proactive alert mechanism through that on the community side you don't get everything okay we'll talk about anyway and what can be done towards monitoring automation how you take the automatic backups how you do the recovery that also will see that manual automation through the tool tool anyway is a licensed you have to you cannot get that through the atlas uh, you cannot take the backup impact but native how does recovery happen that you need to understand mainly that i'll cover in detail so first thing is introduction and next thing is linux basic administration mostly you guys are not familiar with the unix platform because this product mainly runs on the unix flavors so a lot of people are unfamiliar with the unix flavors so next three classes i'll make you understand Whatever I'm going to cover next three classes, if you know those basics to understand the, uh, you know, to operate this product on the Unix flavor, that's enough. I mean, whatever I'm going to cover in the next three classes on the Unix platform with the commands uh, to understand the OS side, to install, to manage the product, to troubleshoot the product, and to build the, you know, service accounts, and to copy the files, to move the files, to change the permissions. So we're going to talk about a basic uh, command set what we need to know as a DBA. Okay, we don't need to have an expert level of knowledge on the Unix, but you should know certain things to manage the product. So those three classes will cover entire Unix administration to manage our product on the platform. Okay, that I'm going to cover in the next model. Architecture. Architecture is very important. That that is where we're going to spend four, roughly four or five classes. If you understand the architecture, you connect to every issue that we are going to discuss. Because how does Mongo does the recovery? How does it logs the entries when it you do the operations? Where it logs and how it keeps the you know like um, uh, recycle that logs automatically and uh, how we have to do it manually and how does it if the Mongo recovers or uh, restarts automatically? How does it do the recovery about un uncompleted transactions? Uh, uncompleted transactions? There are transactions are committed, but they are not made into database. How does it do the recovery? So all that components and all the architecture we're going to discuss in the architecture. This is very, very important. This model makes you really great insight. In fact, about understanding the background. If you understand the background, you can understand most of the troubleshooting. In fact, crude operations uh, as a DBA, what we do on daily basis, we do the deploy this uh, you know, DML operation, crude operations, right? So you have to review it as a DBA. You have to review it. It's very, very important. You just cannot go and blindly deploy what they're asking. Have you reviewed it? Have you know that how much data it is going to affect without running the actual uh, command? What they're given, we can verify ourselves. So I'll share my experience there. I'll give you a good hints. You know how you can verify what the developers are giving without their help. You can run. You can verify. Then you can actually deploy it. So how you do that? Schema design. This is not. As a DBA, we do it, but how you control the data? And certain cases, they load any data that is crap data. Also, how you how do they filter? So we have to give some suggestions. There, this will help us. This is the biggest point. Performance tuning is a, I'm really expert that side. Mongo DB performance tuning, I handle outages just like anything. I mean, on the fly. So how you can easily manage the Mongo outages? This is a very, very interesting point, uh, discussion in the course. And also, 
this is a this has a very high high weightage in the market performance running on the mongo how you can do it how we can raise the load how we can find what's going on how we can give an immediate solution to re, you know retrieve the performance so all that is a big discussions for us administration covers you know backup restore and migrations upgradation security implementation and uh, basic uh, recovery you know how you configure backups and restore how you move data one system to other system many things will be here Admi this is the most generic activities what we do comes under this model backup recovery security will be in this replication replica set and sharding monitoring tools and other client tools to manage the mongo deployments how i do the de uh, deployments what are the tools we have other than this shell so what are the tools people use it in the real time those tools will be discussed here in fact right so this is a major agenda of this course i mean these are the main selling you know like points what we're going to discuss mostly if you know this 95 percent 90 above i'm not saying 100 percent i'm giving you the knowledge what the mongodb has 90 percent i can give i can guarantee you on that point 90 percent of the knowledge how mongo works how what kind of activities we do as a mongo dba how you manage this product on the different platforms in fact so how it scales and all that we're going to see in actions most of the classes are practical oriented i don't focus on the theoretical thing because you can get the theory from anywhere you need to know a live scenarios i break it i fix it intentionally because I, whatever the issues i have faced i built as a scenarios i written case by case i'll give the technical documents i'll show it i'll break it i'll fix it and give the documents you need to do the same thing you just follow me you get the most of the understanding what this product need as a dba so any questions from anyone i'm done with the demo i'm mean, whatever i have to deliver in the demo just i gave you like uh, nothing technical today it's only most of the information guys if anyone want to ask something please let me know just stay back don't go away i mean i'll stop and talk if you want to have any question ask some question please please ask before i stop the video when i'm stopping it then just stay back